This video might upset a lot of Dragon Ball fans, but I will do what I must. In the original video regarding how Broly got their character redeemed, there is one thing that needs to be discussed. Why was Z Broly a terrible villain and why could he never become canon? Hello, my name is Bugsy and I'm a person who yaps about anime and may have some bad takes. Z Broly is a fan favorite of many Dragon Ball fans, but also has a decent amount of haters. I've always wondered why Z Broly was not a character who could become canon, and I believe I figured out why. One of the biggest issues with Z Broly, besides his origin story, is his power scaling. While all Dragon Ball fans know the meme of how Z Broly hates Goku because he cried all the time, that is not the reason why Z Broly hates Goku. Shout out to Team 4 Star for making the meme that people believe is the reason. When Planet Vegeta went up in flames and was on the verge of exploding, Broly was able to create a barrier which protected himself and Paragus. Mind you, he was able to do this unconscious with no training whatsoever. As a child, Broly's power was already ready to high which began the problem of trying to power scale him. We learned that there was a mysterious person who was going around destroying galaxies which should not be understated. A singular person having the capability to destroy a galaxy something we have never seen in Dragon Ball. Obviously in Dragon Ball Super we learn of the god of destructions who have the ability to destroy galaxies at will but not during the Z timeline. This happened in the beginning of the Dragon Ball Z Legendary Super Saiyan movie and we do not know who this Saiyan is or what form was used to destroy the Southern Galaxy. We can make the assumption that Broly would transform into Super Saiyan to destroy the entire galaxy, right? But what if he was able to destroy the Southern Galaxy in base form? Okay, this is frightening to think about, but not just as a viewer, but as a writer. I am not sure how Toriyama Sensei was going to make this work or maybe he knew Broly was going to only have three spin-off movies. We see Broly versus the Z fighters and as we all know, Broly had no problems. Even in base form, Broly was able to scare Vegeta, the proudest Saiyan ever. He transforms into the legendary Super Saiyan and his body completely explodes. Broly is no longer the same person he was seconds prior. He is truly a monster. And we see that rampage throughout the movie, absorbing every single punch, key blast, hell, even a point blank Kamehameha and not a single scratch. Broly is having the time of his life and he's only becoming more insane and powerful. Not a single Z fighter is getting stronger or achieving a new form. So how does Broly end up losing? It's very simple actually. The plot demanded that Broly lost. Broly got so powerful over the course of the movie that it would not make any sense for any of the fighters to defeat him. Even with the combined strength of all the Z fighters, it would have done nothing. The only reasonable option which could have led to Z Broly's defeat would have been Gogeta, but we did not see that. For Goku to gain all the power of the defeated Z fighters plus a little bit from Vegeta was enough to one punch a legendary Super Saiyan and extremely powerful Broly does not make any sense. After the first movie, the trauma of Broly losing to Kakarot led him to losing pathetically in the second movie and we will not even discuss the third movie. Actually, let's address the second movie. Since Broly was launched into the sun and survived by the way and ended up frozen on earth for X amount of time, he would have received a Zenkai boost. Even with Gohan training the entire time, it would not make any sense for him to not get decimated by Broly the minute he woke up from his nap. However, we do know that Broly is a bit sadistic and likes to see his enemies in pain. Once Broly wakes up and fights Goten and Trunks, we see him start to lose his mind when he looks at Goten because he looks like Kakarot, which makes sense because they are damn near identical and that is his son. Gohan shows up and Broly just plays around with him until he decides he's ready to destroy Gohan and the earth along with him. We see the infamous family Kamehameha and Goku shows up which throws off Broly's concentration and Trunks saves the day with a singular key blast. Now how even with a Zenkai boost and a legendary Super Saiyan form Broly lost it does not make sense but that is how Akira Toriyama intended for Broly to be defeated. Now does this mean that Broly was never as strong as we imagined? Did the viewers get this idea of Broly being indestructible in their head or were we right all along? Like I mentioned earlier, I think that Toriyama knew that he made Broly too strong and had to figure out a way to nerf him quite a bit. Let's not forget that Videl, one of the weakest Z fighters, was able to tank a lariat from Broly and did not end up with a scratch. This is one of the glaring issues with some of the Dragon Ball movies, but they are decades old, so it is fine.
Z Broly has the same issue that Star Killer from Star Wars already has, being a non-canon character that was incredibly too strong and damn near meme-worthy strength. Star Killer was so damn strong that he was using Force Lightning and throwing Tie Fighters within the first 15 minutes he was playable. Let's not forget that Star Killer was able to bring down a goddamn Star Destroyer. Who in Star Wars history has been able to bring down a Star Destroyer? Let's not even go on about the feats Star Killer was able to achieve. In the main story, he was able to gain light and dark side force abilities. He fought Vader and the Emperor, defeated Shock T, conquered Rancor and other monsters. In the DLC, Star Killer kills Obi Wan, Jedi Leia, Boba Fett, Chewbacca, Han Solo, and turns Luke Skywalker to the dark side. Point being, Star Killer literally is a broken character, and trying to make a character like that canon would destroy the story and memories that people have regarding the character. I have seen conversations of Starkiller vs Anakin and even Starkiller vs Ahsoka. Let me talk to you real quick. Yeah you. Yeah yeah yeah. The one that brought up these comparisons. Number one, nobody is defeating my GOAT Anakin Skywalker. Now, Mr. Sokotano, it is a bit hard to say because the power scale is very different because we have yet to see what a full power Ahsoka can do. Same thing regarding Star Killer. But I would have to lean towards Star Killer beating Ahsoka simply because he will use the dark side. While there is no official proof or report that is why Broly's story got retconned, I can assume that played a role. Z Broly is so damn broken that in Dragon Ball Super Hero, the only characters who look like they could do any amount of damage to Broly are Super Saiyan Vor, Vegito, and Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta at the same time. You are telling me that the two strongest mortals are the only people able to match Broly's strength? Yep, definitely could not be a canon character whatsoever. Now, if we quickly look at the villains that we have in Dragon Ball Z, there are no characters who rival Broly when it comes to being broken. Everyone had some form of weakness or a character got a buff that made sense. In the case of Z Broly, there was not a single character who could have rivaled him in the movie. Putting non-canon characters versus canon characters is something fandoms have started doing recently. In my opinion, it does not work because the power scaling in both universes is not possible. One argument being Z Broly versus S Broly. Who is the strongest? Many people will say S Broly because he was able to fight Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta but ended up losing versus Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. Others will say Z Broly because he lost against nobody until Goku got a miraculous buff. At this point, putting non-canon characters versus canon characters are fan fictions and will stick to that. Unless a writer or a creator comes out to address the argument, then there should not be anyone getting serious about hypotheticals. Well, unless it's a conversation between Gogeta vs Vegito for Dragon Ball Z or Starkiller vs Ahsoka Tano for Star Wars. I believe these can lead to fun debates, but that is just about it. When using canon universe materials, material versus extended universe material that does not follow the same rules makes it difficult. Let's go with Broly's situation. If both other fighters were going to exist in the same universe, how do you power scale them? We both know that both Broly's get stronger as the fight continues, and as far as we know, they do not have a limit. Z Broly's entire body destroys itself, personality becomes sadistic, and it becomes impervious to pain, while as Broly gets larger, more destructive, and loses mental control. That is the key, the loss of mental control. He is unable to hit Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, even when he is the most powerful, he should have been able to hit Hit whom I will consider as a rival, but nope, he gets clapped up and almost sent into oblivion. I just want to throw this in here, but Vegeta is a better fusion than Vegito. It makes me sad that Z Bro's origin story is one of the main issues of the character, one of the coolest villains introduced into the anime and quickly got retconned. Yes, some of it is due to Vic McNogo and the drama between him and Funimation Studios, but I still think it is due to the origin story. It would have been very hard to give him a more comprehensive and less meme type story if they were to introduce him into a newer anime. I do enjoy the newer version and think he will have a good role to play once the anime is back, whenever that may be. We have seen how well Broly is doing in the current manga and think he will soon have more characteristics that make sense. However, bringing a non-canon character into canon is very difficult, which we clearly have seen. I think for this video, I want to conclude with saying that it is okay to allow characters to stay non-canon and to live off the memories of them. One of the most difficult tasks is making an overpowered character make sense in a canon universe without breaking canon. Which is why Star Killer or Z Broly will not be canon and it should stay that way. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comment section who is a non canon character who you would like to see become canon. Make sure to leave a like and comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, make sure to subscribe as well. RP Akira Toriyama Sensei.